Welcome back to the Lineit Lab. My name is Peter O'Donnell. In this short series of videos, we're going to look at beating the hinge in line of defense and how, go to, and how to go about it. The first video is going to focus on five-man defense. Before getting into it, if you're new to the channel, please click that like and subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen where you'll get access to loads of additional content from me. Please also like and share the video to help the discussion grow. Thank you. Okay, so beating the hinge. We're going to look at five-man initially and then um, I'll look at six-mans in a separate video. So first clip we're going to look at is Munster against Glasgow and some attacks are quite good at um, I suppose you know challenging the defence but I think sometimes we make it harder for ourselves as well and I think we have to as attacks have to try and think of what the defence are doing to us so in, if we look at this particular example what what the defence are trying to well a lot of defences are trying to compress that space or will try to compress the space and here we see Munster um, all, but it, com I suppose compressing it as well it's actually we see something Ireland do as well but a 1-4 split and a number of teams actually do a 1-4 split in the 5 man and that's good I think it can be very useful to do that sometimes but I think if you are going to go with that option you have to really consider the options that you're using to dummy and to control the hinge space um, and control the hinge so for example if you look at how the, the defence are, 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 are shaping up they, they're man watching they're not ball watching so I think a simpler quicker movement works better against that type of defence so we see that they actually play into their hands and they're not re because they start off compressed they're not really challenging them enough and in fairness he actually does an unbelievable job to catch that and um, in, in the middle of a lot of pressure and they and they, they're able to retain the ball it does set up their ability to get a really good mall they get a decent mall going actually on the back of it but i think that's one thing to consider is that you're putting yourself under a lot more pressure once you compress that space with the option you pick depending on the type of defense so before we look at the other, the other clips what i'm looking at and focusing here on this is or questions and thoughts we should have is how do they defend why are they ball or man watching and i think we want to try and create space not necessarily condense it but if we do condense it we need to look at um simpler quicker movements okay um and essentially want to have movements that attack the hinge space um and i'll show i'll talk a bit more about that in, in, in a moment so just as an example here here's a here's a good clip where we see the defense um under pressure because the the attack go after the hinge space so they go for a three three uh, a loaded preloaded option which the lines look to match um and they're really going after this man here in the middle because he's just the lifter essentially uh, in this setup so therefore jumping in his area is is what the attack does and it's very hard to defend the other thing about this is that they're actually challenging five people in the line and that's probably another important aspect to consider that you're challenging all five defenders to make decisions here we see another example of attacking the hinge space so yes there's a few movements and a few options but it's done at real speed and again very very difficult to defend so this man is, def is I, I'm, I'm going to say it, we're, we're attacking the hinge or trying to beat the hinge, but it's also a mirror hinge. So this man is defending this man initially as they walk into the line out. But if there's any, once there's any sort of movement, then he's just a lifter. So he'll jump if, they, if James Ryan was to take an option here to him. But once there's any sort of movement, he's just going to be a lifter, which is quite common. A lot of teams do this. So therefore, we have to look to attack him. So by getting to bite forward, he has to go bite backwards, but then they'll jump back and attack his space in here and, and, and that makes it very very difficult for these three men to read to read that um it's not quite it's not quite in zone two or zone three um it's more cl closer to zone three i'd say um but it's 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 very difficult for these three to make to make a good decision and Ireland win the ball cleanly and efficiently so attacking the hinge space is really i suppose what i think works well we see a number of teams using their plus ones appreciate this isn't the best angle but we've got a hinge here and the attack are going to go for i suppose a quick option to bring in the plus one this can be very useful i'm not going to show you some other good clips of using the plus one then in a few minutes um but i think you have to use really good deception to get him to bite and he's got good eyes from inference he picks it up really really early this guy's a good defender this guy's a good reader and they're able to realize that it's a kind of zone two jump and they get up and put a lot of pressure on it so as a def good defenders will read that and i think if you're going to use your plus one you need to think about the options that you're using and the same with six mans as well that it's got to have a bit more deception i think because good defenses will read that okay then we also have to look at i say the hinge space so same as what we looked at before in that south africa lion slip 
we're going to see something similar, but now using the plus one. So whilst this is quite a simple in terms of it's not there's not a lot of movement. So I I don't mean it's easy. I mean not a lot of movement. Um, it it makes it difficult for this man to make a read. Because the attack kind of hold back and hold the space towards the the middle back of the line out, they can use their plus one and he comes in and they can secure the ball pretty easily. So I options like that I think work really really well. However, we also have to think of other options to attack that hinge. That again, w a bit like the England, the Ireland versus England clip, if we get them to bite twice that third time, it's very difficult to make two or three really good decisions. So what we see here in this example is a bit of animation forward. A loop and a turn, or, or not even loop. One the one runs straight through. Sometimes the one used to want to run around and a looping kind of movement, and then uh, could do both. Whereas this it's a little bit different. But we can see that he, the hinge, has to make a read, and then there's going to be a nice little turn, and they're going to lift and jump in this space here, which is challenging these two defenders as well. So it's not just challenging the hinge; it's actually challenging these two defenders, and that's what I think a really good lineout uh, option does is that it challenges once you have enough when, it, when it's when it involves a number of dummies, I think that's what makes this a really good option um, because all five people have to make a read and they win the ball nice and easily. Okay, so I'm a big believer in when the hinge has to go forward and then backwards quickly, it can be very challenging. And even as you see there with a couple of movements, there was forwards, backwards, and then forwards again. That's very, very difficult. But generally, I think a lot of movements where they have to go forward and then backwards quickly are, are equally very difficult when there's not a lot of dummies involved. So here is a much cleaner, simpler movement where the hinge here, now they've kind of given it away with a bit of a tell, that they're, or not a tell, but the pl plus one, the attack has get the pl at the plus one at the back of the line out. But once there's any sort of animation forward, the plus one, ha the hinge has to respect it. And plus one comes in, and again, very difficult to make that decision and, and, and to, to make a good read. Okay, and here we see now an example of what I was talking about earlier in terms of make with a bit more deception now in the plus one. So. I'll play it through once and then we can I'll talk a bit of more detail. So if we keep your eyes on this guy is a very good hinge defender, and as you as you keep your eye on him, there's a nice little bit of dummy. Forwards. He's watching, he, he reads the prop in terms of his turning when he turns, but then he's committed forward, and once his hips and shoulders are turned, it's very difficult for him to turn or to get back to get back and um the attack do a really good job here. I know they don't actually don't win the ball, but what they do have is they've got a free throw at the tail of the line. And here we see something similar. So we see a bit of a bite back. He's also looking at this man in the corner of his eye, and he sees that there's a bit of animation to the front, so he's 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 held now, and then the plus and then the plus one comes in, and all you need is a bit of hesitation, and and that's enough to win the ball. So really well done by the attack there when using the plus one. So again, going back to those initial questions and thoughts that I had, how do they defend? Are they ball man watching? Do they are, and how we create space? I think I'm a big believer in that creating space and not condensing it. And if you take away your space, uh, I think a simpler, quicker movements are the ones that are really effective, and the move movements that ideally attack that hinge space. Okay, so good defenses will aim to compress the space, and I think that's what we have to think about as attack coaches. Then, how do we combat that? And one way to do that is to challenge the spacing. So spread yourselves out, go equal spaces, or change your setup or formation. And going with maybe a preload at the front is going to challenge maybe the first three men on the line in terms of how they set up in particular. What's the mirror hinge going to do? Is he going to follow, or are they happy to give a free throw to the front? So you could, or and equally, you could do the same towards the back. You might go with a one 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 three or something similar to that. And I think those types of formations really challenge the defence to to um to defend or if you go with a shift option where you might move from a 113 into a 131 or into something else and i think that's that, that within the line that is, that is so after you've actually engaged the line and walked into the line you change your formation i think those options are very difficult to defend equally then how, how you use your plus one and as i sh showed there there's a few options where we need to have a bit more deception about how we go about that but ultimately, one of the things that I'm a huge fan of is getting the mirror hinge or the hinge to bite forward and then jump in behind in his space. And I see two good examples of it here. So keep your eyes on him and notice how he'll have to commit forward once there's a bit of animation forward and then they jump just to, uh, in behind that where he was, essentially. And we see another example of it here. So keep your eyes on Metallic. Okay, so it's animation forward, dummy, and then they jump just in behind that space and very difficult to defend that. Don't forget to click that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts.